Greetings, my esteemed Laddingtons. Welcome back to Valachia and our ongoing campaign with the heroic and glorious Vlad Dracula. So, without further ado, we'll get into episode number three The Breath of the Dragon. The punishment for all offenses was death. For Dracula needed to make an example of criminals. Under his strong rule, trade was reopened and the economy blossomed. Proud of his achievement, Dracula placed a golden cup in the central square of Dargonista. Dark was never once touched throughout his life. I was shocked. The fear of the stake was surely enough to prevent crime. But to rule Valeria while simultaneously evading the plots of the boyars was no small feat. Rachla invited all of the boyars to a feast and asked them how many rulers they had seen perish due to treachery. None had seen fewer than seven reigns, while some had even seen thirty. Furious! Dracula arrested them all and marched them here to the former ruin of Pulinari Castle. For months they labored to rebuild the castle, toiling even after their clothes fell off. Those who survived were slain. Finally, Dracula had eradicated the fickle Konaivik boyars. He replaced them with loyal followers. The knights or common peasants. Strong again, the dragon was ready to breed a flame that would engulf his enemies, the Turks. Alright, so another highly motivating and epic introduction. That is what I like. A strong ruler who sees criminality sharply reduced and the trade blossoming, so uh, yeah, a uh, good man, Dracula. Some say he might have been a bit brutal, but you know, those were brutal times, so perhaps if some modern man sees him and say, oh, he was so brutal and mean to everyone, well, he needed to be mean and brutal because he wanted his people to prosper, so um, yes, a, a true hero, um, Vlad Dracula. Anyway, our main objectives. As usual, Vlad Dracula must survive, and we must conquer Giorgio by destroying its castle and all towers. Then I will read the hints here. Dracula now rules Valachia, and we're playing as the Slavs. Very good indeed, Slav Strong. My lord, I have scouted the fortress of Giorgio, but it is well defended. We will need siege weapons to take it. Right, and I am still, even though we're on our third episode, I'm still amazed at the graphics, especially since I grew up playing this game and just seeing this, um, yeah, makes my... It warms the heart. Look at this, also. A, uh, <laughs> he has impaled someone there, perhaps some sort of criminal, perhaps some, someone who wasn't loyal to um, his reign. Um, So yes, as I said, we are playing as the Slavs this time. I have um, an analysis. I think somewhere in Eastern Europe they have commenced a ritual. So they stole a lot of testosterone from Western European men. I uh, can't back this up, of course, but um, it wouldn't surprise me if there was some sort of magic that allowed Slavic men, Eastern European men, to be a bit more masculine on average uh, this uh, day and age. Well, usually I like to say that that is how Western European men, or perhaps Swedish men, used to be back in the day. Uh, so a few generations back. Um, Swedes, of course, used to be um, 
very manly um, and to great pride in masculine endeavors, uh, especially military endeavors. Sweden had a strong army and military for a long time and all men had to do the mandatory service. I am very fortunate in the fact that I got to do uh, my mandatory 11 months. But uh, anyway, that is why I'm making videos. I'm trying to reintroduce some Thumos and some testosterone to um, to the West. Yes, we are indeed. We must liberate this fine townsfolk of um, Valachia. So there we have a castle from the Ottoman army. And I suppose maybe they will ride out with something. We're just gonna stay behind here and protect it at all costs. So anyway, I thought to mention something. That if you are interested in history, you are a lucky man. Because there are so many cool and epic stories. So many fascinating adventures that you can read up on. So I played a bit also I on the Kumans campaign here in Age of Empires 2. Uh, and I was somewhat familiar with the Kumans because I watched Kings and Generals channel here on YouTube. Um, and just being able to play a game such as Age of Empires here and get that story it's, uh, it's a luxury. And of course since we have uh, the internet and books for that matter. You can just go to a library and um, and borrow some books if you're interested in uh, in history. So much to read up on. Uh, and as they say, sometimes reality or uh, history is stranger than fiction. That's also something I think George Martin said when People complained that Game of Thrones was too brutal. He said, if you want some brutality, just read history. And yeah, he had a point. It's a lot of brutal happenings in, uh, in world history too. Especially if we're talking about the Kumans, who got in the way of Genghis Khan and the Mongols. They were um, excruciatingly brutal. And I'm using excruciating here in its correct sense for once. Usually I misuse um, the word excruciating. I say something is excruciatingly epic, for example. It's not really how you're supposed to use the term. You're supposed to use it as in something is excruciatingly painful. And I suppose it could work if I say Genghis Khan was excruciatingly brutal. But um, yeah, he was good at conquering. And for that he has our respect. Even though we, as Europeans, were on the uh, receiving end of his brutality. Alright, we have liberated this fine place. So there we have... Aha, right. Uh, we still have some Turkish soldiers here that we need to, that we need to kill off. And the cannons can stop shooting. Ottoman arm is defeated. Now, what I like to do is just get the heavy plow upgrade and then toggle automatic farming. Then you can build the castle and then I will upgrade hand cart so they work a bit better. They're 10% faster and carry 50% more, so that is a, um, a good investment. And see, yes, have some idle villagers. And what we'll do now? Simply build up my base here. So I will just utilize a little edit and then, um, yeah, I will get back to. Alright, so I did something ungamer like. I restarted on standard difficulty instead of moderate because I, um, yeah, I continued playing as I left off but I quickly noticed it was going to be a 
grind of the ages it was probably going to take quite uh, some time to uh, play it through on um, on moderate so i simply yeah i started a new on standard to uh, yeah speed things up a bit so now i have reduced the green enemy here to um, yeah defeated them and now i will invade these guys down here the magyars so that is what is up and i will also go down here across the bridge to um, drive off the turks from this fine land so i will update again after i have done so considering it's uh, quite a bit of um, things to show otherwise and it might be an excessively long episode um, so yeah okay so what has happened yes the Ottomans got um, destroyed here most satisfactory then uh, we also destroyed Orsova here so now we have two little cities left uh, which is this uh, place Bulgarians Rahova and uh, then we also have Novo Selo, uh, which is located somewhere else. I don't know quite where, but uh, I suppose we will find out in just a bit. I'm transporting our soldiers from across the river here. And uh, these Laddingtons, I suppose they will try to explore and find where Novo Selo might be. So yes, this um, I can understand if this uh, mission was quite hopeless playing on on hard or um, moderate. Usually I play the historical battles on hard and I've played the previous episodes in this on moderate. But um, yeah, it was um, quite, uh, quite the challenge to be sure. So, um, yeah, that being said, I uh, just wanted to get to the end sequence, to the epic end of, end of mission uh, story time, I suppose. Not quite sure what to call it, but um, something like that. If you spare us, we will give you all that we have. All right, I will spare you, Rahova. Now we just need to find where Novacelo is. It might be here. Probably is because we have some docks. Create some fire ships here to take the river. So anyway, generally speaking of uh, learning history. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I will not uh, overstate the point, but it is a good point, so I uh, think it bears repeating. Uh, gaming, like this, uh, such an excellent starting point to just uh, become familiar with some sort of country, civilization, people. Then you just read up further on them. So I mentioned previously about the Cumans. And, uh, yeah, their uh, tragic story. Basically, getting driven off their land by Genghis. And, uh, trying to find out a new land to settle. And, of course, it's um, easier for them, since they were already nomadic. But it's still a... Um, heartbreaking story as of course is um, the case with a lot of the people who came in the way of the Mongols but uh, yeah fascinating to, to read about so if you feel blackpilled about something perhaps you're you go through some hard times in your life you can just contrast it with some other things that has happened in history So now these guys should uh, give up. Hopefully soon. Maybe we need to. Ah, there we are. Okay, 
Oh, I see. Well then. There we are. Okay, so Victorious. Uh, as I said, I played it on standard just to get on with the storyline and to get to this fine thing right here. This wise man, whomever he was, was certainly no commoner. I wondered aloud if perhaps he had fought in the wars of which he spoke. My question was answered with a grin and a nod. I was awed to encounter a soldier who has survived those years of turmoil and bloody warfare was rare. We sat Giorgio, Darstor, Novosello, Drido Poirot, and many more times, he muttered, revealing the scars on his arms. Our strikes were swifter than bolts of lightning. Yes, we have peace now, but I have never found it. Not a single day goes by. Right, so thank you for watching. In next episode we'll go to The Moon Rises and I suppose we'll continue on with the resistance to the Ottomans. XOXO, boo!